Hey AP Advanced Kids, we're going to be talking about capacitors today. So what are capacitors? Capacitors are really cool and extremely useful and if you have any electronic devices, it is filled with capacitors. So what, what is a capacitor? Well, a capacitor is just simply two conductors that are connected to a voltage source like a battery. Any, any two conductors. So here I have two parallel plates uh, in lab. We're going to be making capacitors with aluminum foil. Doesn't matter. Usually they're separated by some sort of insulator. That's called a dielectric. We're going to talk about that in a different video. But what happens simply is the electrons are taken off of one plate and moved and deposited on the other plate. So I get an equal but opposite amount of charge on these plates. So the battery just simply moves charge from one side to the other. So I get an equal but opposite charge on the plates. And this happens until the potential difference of the plates is the same as the battery voltage. So the charge on each of these conductors are equal and opposite. So one will be a positive Q and one will be a negative Q. And when we do that, right, when we separate charge, we're gonna get an, an electric field generated in between these plates of my capacitor. And it's going to be a very uniform electric field in between the plates. What's really cool about this is once we separate those charges, right, and we have an electric field, we have an electric potential, right? We have a voltage, which means we are storing electric potential energy. So a capacitor stores energy that I can use. The thing that's different of compared to like a battery, a battery gives us sustained charge, right? I plug it in, the battery runs for, you know, hours, could be days, could be years. A capacitor though, boom, once we connect it, we release charge immediately. So let's talk about what capacitance is. So capacitance is the ratio of the charge on one of the conductors of the capacitor to the potential difference between the conductors. So we don't say, that it's 2Q or the Q encloses zero because one's positive and one's negative. Um, we just talk about the capacitance in terms of the charge on just one of the plates divided by that voltage. Um, so we have this equation, C is equal to Q over V. Now it's written this way because you'll see that when we start solving for capacitance on like plates and spheres and cylinders, um, this is the form that's useful. But I really don't want you to think about this equation this way because it seems to imply that you could just change how much charge or the voltage and you can change the capacitance. But in fact, really the variable is charge. The amount of charge you can store is equal to the capacitance of the capacitor times the voltage that you charge it with. So like the voltage of your battery or whatever it is. So I want you to really think about it more this way that how much charge you can store is related to the capacitance of the capacitor times the voltage that you charge it with. Now, one thing that's important is capacitance is always a positive quantity. So when we go to do like our calculating of electric potential for our different geometries, um, if we get a negative, we're just going to ignore it. Um, the unit for capacitance is a farad named after Michael Faraday. Now, this is why I said this up here. The value of the capacitance actually depends upon the geometry of the capacitor. So how much charge you can put on the plates is physically dictated by how big your capacitor is and the geometry of it. So that's why I don't really like to think about it in terms of this equation because the capacitance isn't a variable thing. It's set by the shape of the capacitor. Well, one of the things that you're going to have to do is derive equations for capacitance. And so that's how we're going to use this equation. So how do we do that? Well, to find capacitance, first of all, we're always going to assume the charge is Q because one's going to be plus Q, one's going to be minus Q. The second thing is we're going to use Gauss's law to find the electric field between the plates, right? The electric field between the plates is what's storing that energy. Then from that, we're going to calculate the voltage just like we did in our last unit. And then we're just going to plug in to our equation for capacitance Q over V. So that V that we found, we just stick it in the denominator, you know, do some like algebraic stuff and we're good to go. 
let's calculate out the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. It's called parallel plates because they are literally parallel plates. Well, if we go back to our first unit, we learned how to calculate stuff with Gauss's law, the electric field for Gauss's law, right? We did a, a single plate. And uh, let's say we have the single plate with a uniform charge density, positive Q. And I remember we used a cylinder, a cylinder uh, to calculate our uh, electric field for Gauss's law, right? Gauss's law is the surface integral of E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over E naught. So we used a cylinder, and if we did that, wait, the electric field, right, we had electric field poking out of the top and the bottom for just our single plate scenario. There was no charge over the side, so it's not like we were using a cylinder like we would for like a line of charge or something like that. Um, so if we think about this, right, we have electric field that's penetrating both surfaces. And so for our single plate, right, two times the electric field, times the area of the plate, right, here's my plate area, is equal to, now the enclosed charge, right, the charge that is enclosed here in my little surface, right, if we talk about the surface charge density being the amount of charge per area, um, then the Q enclosed would equal the surface charge density times the area that I have here enclosed in my wonderful, pretty cylinder. Um, and so when I plug that up here, we have uh, A over E naught. And these A's, right, this is the A of our Gaussian surface, and so is that. So that's pretty cool. That cancels out. And so we get the electric field for one plate is equal to the surface charge density oops, over 2E0. Now, of course, uh, what is the surface charge density in terms of the actual plate? Because you'll see there's no surface charge density sort of thing here. So the surface charge density, right, I said is just that charge uh, over the total area of my plate. So if I want to plug that in, then I would get Q over 2E0A. Now, this is one plate. One plate. But I have two plates here, right? So in fact, I would do two little cylinders here, one here, uh, maybe another cylinder uh, here. I'm such a great artist. It's beautiful. Um, and if I do that, right, all really I have is just two of these. So for my electric field, field of parallel plates, PP, is going to be two of these, Q plus 2 E naught A plus Q over 2 E naught A which means those little halves are going to go away and we're going to get Q over E naught A. All right, so Gauss's Law, a little review. All right, next step is to find the potential difference. So um, the potential difference, right, when we did this, we said oops, that V is the negative integral of E dot dr. Now, this is a uniform electric field, so we don't have to do the integral. Um, and so really we're just going to do this here, except that there should be a negative here. But remember, capacitance is never negative, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but so if we take our VE times D, the separation between the plates, or you could call it R or whatever you want to do, and we go back to our last slide and we get the electric field from there, right? That was Q over E naught A. We multiply that by D. And now we plug that into our capacitance equation. And again, there's really a negative here, but capacitance is positive. So we're going to ignore the negative because that's awesome. All right, so capacitance is Q over V. And so we just got our V. We're going to plug that in here. So that's Q over Q D E naught A get rid of that and I get capacitance is equal to E naught A over D. So this is the equation for capacitance for a parallel plate capacitor. So what it tells me is that the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is directly proportional to the area and inversely proportional to the separation between the plates. So depending upon how big these plates are, right, that's going to determine how much capacitance, how much charge I can hold. And same thing with D, the separation between the plates.
that the that's an inverse relationship so the closer they are right the smaller it is the bigger the capacitance it's because it helps to stabilize that electric field now this equation um, I think it's on your equation sheet and one of the things this is for an air or vacuum uh, capacitor one of the things you're going to learn about in another video is about dielectrics which are actually insulating materials we put in which form two functions you will see that it actually increases the capacitance of the capacitor but also provides as a support to keep those conductors away from each other right because if the conductors touch each other the charge is just gonna just just flow it's gonna be going bye see ya so uh if we put a insulator in between there it's actually called the dielectric and we're gonna have this addition to the equation it's called kappa and that's the dielectric constant we're saving that for another video all right, let's do another shape because we love to do Gauss's law. So what about if I have a spherical conductor? So the inside is a conductor with a positive charge Q and maybe it has a radius A and the outer one has the opposite charge negative Q at a radius B. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use Gauss's law to find out the electric field inside the charge conductor in between those two plates. So uh, surface integral of E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over E naught. Now, if we're here, right, what is Q enclosed? Well, Q enclosed is the positive Q. And what is my area? Well, this is a sphere, right? So that is four pi r squared. So that means the electric field times the area of our imaginary Gaussian sphere, which is a distance r in between, uh, is equal to positive Q, I'll just write Q, over E naught. So the electric field by Gauss's law is Q over 4 pi E naught R squared. Boom. Next step, use Gauss's law to get the voltage or the electric potential between those spheres. All right, so our electric potential, all right, we'll call this VBA, is the negative integral from A to B of the electric field that we just calculated, which was uh, Q over four pi E naught R squared dr. All right, let's take our little constants out. So the electric potential from B to A uh, is equal to the negative Q over four pi E naught R squared integral, oops, sorry, r to the negative two, all right, let's just uh, put that in integral form, dr from a to b. All right, so uh, that means that this is gonna be negative q over four pi e naught, uh, the integral of r to the negative two, right, is negative one over r. Again, we're going b to a. Uh, we can get rid of that negative, uh, and that's going to give us Q over 4 pi E naught, 1 over B minus 1 over A. Um, and uh, we should get a common denominator here, so why don't we multiply this by A over A and this by B over B, uh, and we're going to get Q over or Q, let's do A minus B all over four pi E naught AB. All right, so now we have the uh, electric potential. So now we gotta do the capacitance. Now, the electric potential equation we just got, I'll just write it here because it was a little complicated, right? We had Q uh, A minus B over uh, four pi E naught AB. Um, now, I know that quantity looks positive, but if you actually think about it, it's actually going to be negative because A is kind of a less distance than B, but that's okay because it's a positive quantity, right? Capacitance is positive, so we're just going to kind of ignore that. So uh, our capacitance is equal to Q over V. So I'm going to plug that in here. So we got Q over this really pretty quantity, Q A minus B over 4 pi E naught AB. And so our Qs are going to cancel. Uh, our denominator is going to go up into our numerator, our denominator, the denominator. 
we got 4 pi e naught a b over a minus b. So there is my capacitance equation. See, not so bad, right? Just practicing what we did in our last two units all over. One more, cylindrical capacitors. So cylindrical capacitors also exist. So we have conductor here with a positive charge in the middle and a negative charge on the outside. And remember that these are conductors, so these charges always reside on the surface uh, of our conductor. Um, in this case, the negative charge is on the inner surface, right, because it's going to be attracted to the positive charge. Um, and if you remember uh, when we did the electric field, right, we used a cylinder as well. Um, and instead of going through Gauss's law, hopefully you remember how to do Gauss's law for uh, a cylindrical uh, charge, right? The electric field would be this, or, um, you know, how we typically do it, uh, which would have been lambda over 2 pi uh, e naught r, um, if you want to use the 4 pi e naught strategy, which you normally get from Gauss's law because of the area function. Um, and so, uh, but we could do the voltage here, right? Uh, the voltage uh, from B to A, I'll just do, I'll just abbreviate that, negative integral uh, from A to B, but I'm going to use this 2K, why not? 2K lambda uh, over R dr. Um, so if I pull out my constants, uh, we're going to get a negative 2 K lambda uh, integral from A to B of 1 over R dr. So uh, what is the integral of 1 over R? Well, that's the natural log of R, right? So we get our voltage VA is equal to negative 2 K lambda uh, natural log of R from B to A, which would give us negative 2k lambda uh, natural log of b minus the natural log of a, uh, which then gives us negative 2k lambda uh, natural log, I uh, didn't, whatever, uh, b over a. So there you go. Now, uh, now that we got that, let's do our capacitance. And again, remember capacitance is a positive quantity, so we're just gonna ignore that. So the capacitance is Q over V. Uh, so our V was 2K lambda, 2K lambda, uh, natural log of B over A. Um, and one more piece I need to do here is get rid of that lambda. That just like hit me in the face, right? We can't uh, cancel out Q. So if we think about charge conductors or cylindrical conductors, right? Lambda would be Q uh, over L. So L being the length of whatever our cylindrical capacitor is. So we can put that in here. So we're going to put that in up there. So we're going to get that C is Q over 2K, Q over L, natural log of B over A. So now we can get those done. And L is going to go up on top. And we have 2K, natural log of B over A. All right. Well, that's all I got for you. See you in class.